Good evening, everybody. Welcome to But I Have a Day, Physio 2022, on Friday the 3rd of June. Um, as we speak, our physical day has, has probably just come to an end, and um, it is it's the first time we have seen visitors back uh, on the island in three years due to the, the pandemic. Um, and yeah, we'll have had a, hopefully I had a great day with the son of Sean and, and plenty of whiskey has been drunk. Um, what we wanted to do this evening was reach out to our virtual audience um, who have kept us going also through this through this difficult period for everybody. Um, and uh, joining me tonight are, are three of our key whiskey makers um, in our business, um, which I'll introduce you to. We have Andrew Brown, our distillery manager. Hello Evening, there. Andrew. Evening, we have Andrew. Julianne Fernandez, who is our master blender. Hello. And we have Brendan McCannon, who is our master distiller. Hey, Pete. Even though, um, listen, also down, down on the screen here somewhere, folks, there's also a chat box. So, listen, we will be reacting to this this evening, even though we're not here in, in reality. It's a bit like <clears throat> in the UK, we have the Graham Norton show, which is always played on a Friday, but it's recorded on the Thursday, and we always try and catch them out. So we are, we are a wee bit like that this evening. So, um, so but however, we will be reacting live to your comments um and to um uh, to anything that you want to say about our whiskies or, or, or any other questions you may have um for those joining us what you, what you should have is we, you should guys should have hopefully two of our little tasting packs which have been handmade and handcrafted here or at going to have a distillery by leah and sarah and her team and in this one, sorry, get this right. There are there are three drams which we have our gonna have in twelve, our uh, Avon Areg and and Tokai, but I'm Tokai, and then we also have our our master distiller pack, which uh, my three colleagues are going to go through with you this evening. So um, so like get, hopefully you have these at the ready, um, and I think we made about I made about five hundred and five hundred of each, and they've all sold out. So we know we have an eager and willing audience this evening. Um, so listen, uh, before we start, what I would just say is that this, I think this is our 36th Physio Festival. Um, and we've just had a, an argument off screen where Andrew says he's not been at the mall. But what I'm going to do is ask each of each of my colleagues, um, what are their favourite memories of Faze so far? And if we start with Andrew, who between, between Andrew and myself, we're probably here the longest. Um, so Andrew, um, what's, what's, what's your abiding memory of fish? Uh, right, the memory of meeting a lot of different people from all around the world. Yeah, I've met some really interesting folk that we've seen them every year. So yeah, that's uh, that, that's one of the abiding memories. And, and every year we meet new food, new people, do tastings, see some old faces, see some new faces. It's always it's always a good day. Abiding memory. Um, do remember we did a whiskey tasting many years ago, uh, where the the presenter was saying that they'd come here on holiday and they'd, they'd caught a crab off the pier and then the, their, their children had caught a crab off the pier and, they, and they, they refused to cook it. So that day at the, we have the, we always have the, the crab shack up. So I went out and bought the crab <laughs> and he had it, he had it for his lunch that day. So that's one of the memories. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, Julianne. A bit like what Andrew said, it's really for me what's so special is, is meeting everybody that travels through the distillery. Um, as Andrew said, we've got so many people that come year after year, so it's always lovely to welcome them back and welcome new people. Um, and I thought the last fish we had, um, obviously pre-COVID, we had people kind of camping out for some of our special releases because it means so much to them. And the, the atmosphere in that queue, I just thought was absolutely phenomenal. Um, these people all bonding over Bonahaven and over our drams and telling stories and just really keeping each other kind of upbeat while they waited in this queue overnight. Because let's be honest, we don't have the best weather in Scotland. So it was cold, it was wet, but nothing could kind of dampen these people's spirits, which I thought I thought was lovely. So yeah, for me, the people make Fejil. And do you have a surprise dram for them this year or are we going to have to wait until near the end? Yeah, I think um, we'll get through the, the first few that we're doing and then I may reveal something special towards the end of this tasting that hopefully everybody will love because I know that we've all tasted it and we love it. So, yeah, look forward to that. Yeah, I remember that queue. It is, it is special and um, thankfully Andrew has a, a big yard there that um, is covered over. Um, it's amazing the loyalty that... <clears throat> 
they've been having drinkers and and those of isla whiskey you know fans and um, when they come to the island that they're prepared to step out or sleep out should i say for that so um great whiskey though it's it's worth it's worth the it's worth the kip as they say um and brendan listen your first physical fish with us for the first time but i know you've you've obviously been on isla way before as well so what are your abiding memories of of fish hmm. Yeah, um, so this will be my 11th fish, I think. So I, I was living on Ayla in 2011. And <laughs> see, guys, I'm just really looking forward to this year's fish because I'm physically going to be on the island. You know, I've worked for quite a few distilleries on Ayla, and usually with one of them, uh, I was more in production, you know, just, just, I was only involved in, you know, laying down the spirit. I wasn't involved in the whiskey making process. So, I used to get taken off the island for meetings during fish, which was kind of crushing, you know. There was this kind of disappointment that, uh, that twanged together with excitement for fish. And then in my, my last role, I used to get to, which sounds very glamorous, but I used to get to travel over to the, the States and, and to Asia to take fish to the world. So again, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. But the only place you want to be when fish is happening is, is on Isla. Uh, and so it's great. Um, it, it's the first one physical for a lot of people, but it's the first one for me on Isla in in ten years. It feels like so. I just can't wait to can't wait to experience the the festival, meet the people, and and have fun on Isla. Super, super great. Well, listen, let's get. I mean, you guys will have had your your masterclass by now in terms of the physical world. Where I think we're seeing up to hundred people um, at the distillery today. Um, however, we, we have a large audience here also to look after. So shall we shall we start with with our drums? Um, just let me check my list to see if if there's anything else I've missed. I don't think I have. I think we're okay. So look, um, what we're going to do? We're going to start with our first whiskey. Is um, so yeah, we're going to go through. So what we have in our kits um, for those that have the kits with them. I should have should have had this open before. Sorry for the noise. So we're going to start with, um, we have our, our going to have a 12 year old. Um, then we're going to, we're going to start with, so Andrew, can you help me with this? It's, I, I'm calling it Avan Arik. Avan Arik, yep. Avan Arik, right? So we'll, when we come to that, we'll explain what Avan Arik is about. And then we have our, our Calvados, which is, which is a new release for this year um, and has done very well, certainly in terms of our, our online business early on has done very well and then and then sorry there's there's one here at the end no 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 that's the tokai that's not the one at the end yet you to say so we've got a tokai which which is our peated offering this year um obviously you know but i haven't is is classically known for being the unpeated whiskey of isla um but we we do have a ammonia um variant which is which is we all know which is great to try so this is this is the the, the tokai is is the version that our our, our, our whiskey makers have, have produced for us this year so, um, glasses at the ready. Are you guys okay? Yeah. Good to go. All right. So, yeah. <clears throat> so the first one we have is our Bunnahaven 12-year-old. Um, Andrew, how would you describe Bunnahaven 12? Hey, I would describe it on the nose. It's fresh, aromatic, fruity, floral. It's got a hint of spice about it. Uh, and it's, it's the classic Bunnahaven. Yeah, it's it's this strange enough. I've been here 33 years, and when I started here, you could get born having in any age you wanted, as long as it was 12 year old. But you could get it in a few different size bottles, and that's what we had. And this yeah. this is still the classic born Allen. It's still when you go out and into the warehouse, you start pulling, you actually start pulling bungs, and you actually know some of the cast, some of the older cast. This is what you get. It's, it's a classic born Allen. It's um. Light fruit notes on the palate, nutty, nutty, something I don't always pick up. That's a Julianne-ism. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass that one on to Julianne. So that's what it is. But do the nuts yeah. do the, the nuts come from the sherry casks? Is that is that the influence of the nut or the nuts in terms of that coming in? Julianne, would you, would you say that's where that comes from? Yeah. So I'd say maybe um, a kind of mixture of two things. So sometimes you can get kind of nutty notes coming through during your fermentation, depending on your um, 
fermentation times, but definitely getting them from the cask as well. Um, the wonderful sherry casks that we use, they're they're fantastic. They they give us so many kind of rich notes and rich flavours. And as Andrew rightly said, this is just classic bun a having. So you've got that beautiful unpeated um, whiskey, the wonderful sherry influence, and and that is just bun a having. Um, basically, summary in a summary. So. Yeah, for me, it's it's rich, it's fruity, it's it's deep, it's it's got so much going on in there, um, and I just think this is an absolutely wonderful dram. Brendan, what 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 part do, 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 does leaving the fatty acid and I, I heard you say a phrase which I love the long chain esters. I actually wrote that down. I thought that sounded. I don't. It made me sound as if I knew what I was talking about. But what what role does that unchill filtered element play in in the flavour of Bonahaven? Yeah, it's just so you kind of can't talk about one bit without talking about it all. But when you put together all the different parts of Bonahaven, I always use the word big. You know, it's, it's just a big whiskey, big, big in big in the size of the distillery, big in the batches that we make, um, big in the, the just 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 it's just a, a colossus of a distillery. It's got big in character, and we use a we use a mash tun to make a very clear wort. We then have a nice, you know, medium long fermentation and wooden washbacks. I, I've been visiting the distillery for 12, 13 years, but it was only when I started working there and Andrew was taking us around that I realised it was spring water that we use in our fermentation, and that suddenly clicked in my head. That's where you get a huge amount of acids forming during the fermentation. And you get your long chain fatty acids being produced as well, and then you <laughs> distill them in these you distill them in these big copper pots as well. And quite what the science to that versus just the magic and the the kind of art is. I don't know where the divide is, but it just gives you a whiskey that, in one way, is is fruity, but it's much more than that. It's fruity, it's floral, it's malty, it's sweet, and it's oily. So it has like a real strength to it, which is why. The, the, the last factor what makes Bonner having so special kicks in and it's just you can mature it almost exclusively because nothing never a hundred percent I would say if you ever hear whiskey makers talking about hundred percent or absolutes I would I would run a mile if I was you um but it's it's almost exclusively matured in sherry and in particular oloroso sherry so it just all of these things play together to give you this unpeated Isla sherried whiskey that's just big and full of flavor. And like you say, to keep it at its, you know, most uninterrupted, to keep it at its clearest and its um, its biggest, its fullest and its most flavourful, uh, we'll bottle it 46.3 or above. And that means it's non-chill filtered and there's no there's no um, caramel colouring colouring either. It's just a great coloured, unfiltered, uninterrupted big whiskey. Yeah. Um, cer <clears throat> certainly, like, you know, um, Leah and Sarah and the visitor team, and uh, as well as you know, on some of our social media, you see our appreciation pages. There's 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 folk that that follow us and and, and love to write about us. But twelve year old always pops up as just great, a great dram, great whiskey, yeah, and and great value. So it's it's been it really is heralded out there. So um, so listen, a great way to start, folks. I don't know you've had a wee a wee touch of that. Um, what, what we're going to do now is, is move on to our first visual release. Um, so in your little tasting pack, it's the second bottle, which is um, our Avon Areg, which um, is, um, Andrew, can you help us what we're, because I think you actually named this, Andrew. This came from yourself. So for yeah. the linguists out there, Andrew's the guy to be looking looking towards. <laughs> so Avon Areg, Avon Areg is actually, so we, at the distillery, we use spring water for, for a process, but we also have our own cooling water as well. So that comes out of Loch Stusha and comes down the Avenarig River to our dam. And from the dam, it comes to the distillery. The Avenarig then runs on over the top of the dam and goes down and meets into the Margaret River, which comes out at the head of the bay at Bonna, just behind the old manager's house at Bonahaven. Bonahaven means mouth of the river. Ah, uh -huh. yeah, Bonna yeah. So Avon means river and get in Scots Gaelic. Super. Okay. Good, good. Now listen, this this is bottled at 58% uh, volume. Um, Brendan, can I can I reach out to you in terms of you how um because there's there's a special cask involved in this process. I think um 
I think on one of your first visits to the distillery when when you joined us, yeah. you yeah. you you eyeballed these almost immediately. So um, can you talk us a wee bit about the octaves in this? Yeah, yeah. So so this whiskey is uh, Avon Arig. So you know we just took the name from the the geography of Bonahaven because we've, we've already talked about that tonight. Um, you know, location isn't everything, but when it comes to making whiskey, there's there's something about that that area that surrounds our distillery where we're located. Hard to get to, but a great place to make great whiskey. And the Abenarig is a key part of that whiskey, um, key part of, the, of our distillery and the way that we make whiskey. Um, so that's why the name came in for for this uh, amazing face release. But the yeah, it was my first visit to Bonahaven as the, the the new master distiller. So when I took the job on, which is just just over a year ago that I started, obviously wanted to get around all of the sites and get get into the casks and understand everything that we had. And so my visit to Bonahaven, Andrew and I, who you know have known each other since I, I used to live in Isla, we went for a look round, looked at production process, met people. All of that kind of stuff, and then uh, a, a pretty cool bit was into the warehouses. So we went into the warehouses just to draw some samples of uh, Bonahaven and Oloroso sherry at different stages. You know, just to help me understand more um, the whiskey as a as a whiskey maker rather than as just a whiskey drinker, because that's my experience of Bonahaven up to this stage. Um, and yeah, Andrew had said there's there's these little Pedro Jimenez octaves. So octaves are really small casks, and if they've been, you know, soaked, seasoned in Pedro Jimenez, um, there's two things. Pedro Jimenez is a big sherry. It's a very flavorful, very sweet, quite impactful sherry at the best of times. But when it's in an octave, it means just the amount of sherry and the amount of wood compared to the amount of liquid in these small casks, it just makes it a very powerful maturation. So Andrew had said it's, it's not, you know, mature Bonahaven that's in there. It, it, it's been, you know, Bonahaven that's ran off these stills from, from day one that were filled into these casks. So that's quite an unusual maturation. And he's like, but I really think, Andrew had said, I really think these, these casks are great. I think, they're, I think they're, they're, they're really different, but they're really great. So we, you know, this is where it's good to be, you know, the boss and the distillery manager. Uh, we took some samples and... Uh, took them for a wee taste, which is sometimes it's nice to be us. And when we pulled the samples out, they were, yeah, yeah, everything about the taste, you know, sort of rich raisins, deep chocolate, a bit of coffee in there, but still these kind of weird, funky, beautiful floral top notes, you know, so something kind of lavender, lavender or rose hip uh, in there as well. But they were just great. Just but only a small amount of casks, you know, but these casts were laid out and we pulled samples from a few. And, and if anything, I'd say the one thing is just the Pedro Jimenez influence was just amazing, but but far too dominant. Yeah. So we then knew there's something we can do with these casks. This I want to make this, I want to make this like the beating heart of a whiskey, but we want to roll in more traditional Bonahaven um and integrate that into this whiskey, if you will. Yeah, no, look, I mean <clears throat> Not that you and Andrew need to know this, but sometimes our warehouse nine customers go a wee bit off piste. So I think I think some of our some of our folks on the on the chat this evening they'll have seen these casts over the last couple of years when they've gone into warehouse nine because they, they they really stood out even though they were very small and um but I think they were so unusual. So it's great to uh, it's great to see them being you know being used within this whiskey. So um, Julianne, would you be able to talk us through from your perspective the the nose of Avanatic and and what our viewers should be looking to enjoy about this whiskey? Yeah, absolutely. So as Brendan said, the, the Pedro Jimenez does come through on this beautifully. It is the kind of heart of this dram, which is lovely. But as he said, what we've essentially done is blended it with your traditional Bonahaven so that we're not losing that. Um, we are obviously so fortunate that Bonahaven as a new make spirit is absolutely beautiful. Um, and obviously over time, it only gets better when we're maturing it in the casks on the island. It's phenomenal. So what we want to do with every dram is make sure that it's still true to Bonahaven. We don't want to completely mask those those wonderful flavours. So the notes that we spoke about, um, even when we looked at the 12 year old, so the, the kind of fruity floral notes, for me in this, I get a lot of kind of like Turkish delight coming through. Yeah. So you've got almost like the rose petals with the chocolate in there. 
it, I just think it's absolutely beautifully balanced. The the Pedro Jimenez influence in this is is phenomenal. But as I said, I just love that you do still have bun of having shining through. You've got those the kind of um toasted almonds, you've got oak coming through, you've still got uh, notes that are so true to bun of having, and I just think it's an absolutely beautiful balance. And um, that rose hip is so strong, and the Turkish delight, as you say, on the nose. Um, it, it is, it is, it's really lovely and light and fruity. You know, it's it's very nice indeed, very pronounced. Andrew, would you add water to this? I mean, obviously, it's 50.8 percent alk. Should I say? Would you add a wee splash of water, at, or or not? What would you think? I would definitely try it without the water first. But if you think it needs it, then I would add a wee bit. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been trying it there. Uh, I've tried it a few times now, actually, and I, I, I'm not putting water in it. Uh, and I agree with Julianne's tasting notes. Well, one of the things I was getting a wee bit right at the back of it, you always get this spicy bun I have, and but and I think I was just just noticing it more. I think I noticed it more today than I have before, and I don't know if it's just because I'm in the office and I haven't normally been in the office, but I'm getting a wee hint of of dry saltiness on it. Mm -hmm. Just Absolutely. a wee, just a wee hint there today, and that's that's the first time I picked that one up. So is that on the lips or just on the? I'm just getting it on the palate. Yeah, just, yeah. just right there at the end. But you know, it's like a kind of salty sea spray finish, is what I get. Yeah. Listen, the only thing, the only thing I would say about that, Andrew, is that you and I are both here today and see that salty sea spray. It is literally banging up against this window <laughs> <laughs> as we speak. Beautiful so, sunny day here, Peter. <laughs> Beautiful sunny day. So, so that's the only thing I would say about the salty sea spray. But maybe, maybe you know. Maybe so, uh, it's interesting that you say it, Pete. So yeah. when we were making the whiskey, I had 46.3 ABV in my head and all the bench blends, all the prototype samples that we put together, they were all at 46.3. So that was absolutely the um, intended drinking strength, let's say, up until the 11th hour. Because at the 11th hour, we started to look at it and we went, you know what? Um, it is fish, it is a, a one-off, it is something a bit special. Yeah. And you often get asked by people who drink Bonner Haven all year round at 46.3 with our core range. So we decided to just, you know, just up things a little bit. So the, the 50.8, after a few um, less than scientific experiments, let's say we landed on 50.8 as the bottling strength. Uh, and, and as Andrew says, if you're if you're enjoying it at 50.8, uh, and I'm sure you are, but just continue to drink it. But I wonder if it's just because I was used to all the prototype samples and like the work, you know, progressing through. But I think if you add a splash of water to it, um, you can start to pick up the individual cask influence. And you also yeah. get this toffee or maple syrup kind of thing emerging alongside definite saltiness. It's not just because it's used to our boasting about being on Isla. <laughs> <laughs> not not at all. Not at all. Um so um listen would you would you reuse those casts, Julianne? Would you would you put the octaves back into battle again for us? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um so as Brendan said, the the flavour from the the whiskey that was in the octaves was it was intense. There was a lot going on. Um and it's because the casks were so well seasoned, they had so much to give. And they have given loads to this bun I haven't, but there's absolutely plenty of life still left in them. So they have been refilled. Uh, I cannot tell you what we've put in them and what what exactly we plan to do with it. But yeah, Brendan and I do have something in the pipeline for these casks going forward. So they absolutely will be getting reused. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. Listen, folks, don't uh, listen. Whatever I mean, our guy, you know, you're listening to our whiskey makers there. They're they're talking about <clears throat> the complex tastes and aromas that they're getting from the whiskey. Don't forget to to pop things in the chat box there to to um, to you know just come back to give us your feedback on what you're experiencing and everything else because that's what's so key and key in all of this. So um, it would be great to to see something coming through. And listen, can I just now just to double check with the three guys? Do you want to go to be on my list? I've got Calvados next. But um, is that that's also in your list? Because I know that the Tokai is is it's normally two, but it's the Calvados who do go next. Okay, so so what we have next, folks, um, if we move on to our next dram, is our <clears throat> and Calvados, which is this lovely lovely bottle behind me. Sorry, I'm in. I said earlier, I'm in my Terry Wogan chair here for those in the UK again. Sorry, um, 
and um, so the bigger box. Andrew's got it. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks for saving me. He, he's the guy that works in the visitor center side here. I'm, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I'm not showing my best. Box, I'll leave it out. <laughs> so, um, so Julianne, this can, can I maybe can you maybe lead us with this in terms of from what I understand? So, Calvados is an apple brandy. Yep. Right? Yep. So. Yep. Apple brandy, and we just felt that this would go really, really well with Bunnahaven because a lot of the times when we know it's Bunnahaven, especially the new make spirit, we get quite a lot of notes of um, kind of crisp apple. Um, some people get it as pears. I know um, Andrew and Brendan uh, tend to, to fight over that quite a lot. One gets apples, one gets pears, um, but we'll leave it at that. So, yeah, we just thought that the Calvados brandy would work really, really well with Bunnahaven spirit. So, this wonderful whisky here um, was distilled on the 28th of October, 1998. And then we transferred it into the Calvados casks um, on the 11th of November, 2019. So this is a 23 year old whisky and you can really, really tell that it's got a beautiful maturity to it. Yeah. yeah. The nose on this one is honestly, it is absolutely phenomenal. So again, as I bang on about constantly, um, the finish for this one, it, it wasn't an extremely long finish. And the reason for that is, like I always say, we want to use casks that are going to complement the, the wonderful flavours of Bunnahaven. We don't want to mask it. And what we tend to do when we're using finishing casks is we put it in and we never know how long it's going to take. Um, and we'll just continue to sample it and see how it's maturing, see how much flavour it's taken on. And then uh, we say, yeah, that's ready to launch. So that, that's the fun part for Brendan and I, where we're sampling these and we're saying, do you know what? This is good to go. This can be this year's limited edition. It's it's not so fun for our wonderful colleagues in marketing who have to then turn around a, a brief and our NPD colleagues getting um, packaging and everything ready. But we have to we're led by the whiskey and we're led by what these casks do so as much as we think we've got a five-year plan it, it changes all the time um, and we just felt that this whiskey was ready um, when we decided to take it out of cask for the Fejil 2022. Oh it's lovely. Uh, Brendan what about yourself what are you getting from this? Yeah so I, I really liked um, working on this whiskey you know obviously I came in uh, only a year ago, so I swept in at the end of the, the 23 years of, you know, craft and culture and skill that went into making this whiskey and swept up a bit of the credit as well, which is my want. Um, but I, I haven't had many Calvados cast uh, whiskies, uh, and, and frankly, there aren't many Scotch whiskies in Calvados, full stop. But I do love that, that influence that it takes on. It's a very bright and zesty and fresh kind of whiskey you know it's got it has got that sort of crisp bite of green apple and it's got a really just nice kind of I, I don't know it reminds me of just like being outside just being outside in greenery you know like yeah. being outside in the summer there's this fresh grassy summery smell um I would say it's almost like that you know perfect weather for hanging out the washing but my wife would look at me with a raised eyebrow and a very unimpressed face because I never do it but <laughs> there's all of this in there and then there's also, and I know that Andrew's going to jump on this and it's like I'm stealing his tasting notes, but it's it's very herbal as well. It's, you know, it's herbal and bright and minty. There's a mint sort of peppery, sweet, refreshing um, eucalyptus kind of note in there as well. So, so it's like, like it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like, almost like a Ritter Sport, like a dark Ritter Sport mint chocolate yeah. thing going on. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, just to go back to Andrew, I was in the still house last night when I came in, and it it definitely I, I got I definitely got pears in there, Andrew. I don't know who I don't know who's inside of the apples and the pears, but uh, when I spoke to Keith last night, that's what it felt like. So, um, Andrew, what about you? Does this how does this stand out for you on the Calvados? Oh, I like this. I do like this. I, and <laughs> I need a bit punch. I get I get a mental nose on it. It's pine mental. I get the, yeah. I get the pear drops. I do get the apple. I get the toffee apple coming through. Come back to your still house, depending when you walk in there, there is definitely there is definitely a, a, a pear pear drop note in the still house, depending where the stills are within the distillation run. If you want to go back up into the washbacks, depending where you are on the fermentation. Yep. Uh, and I'm saying this, hope Brendan's not listening. Uh, there is definitely a green apple note in the wa washbacks that comes through. But when you get into the still house, it goes to pear, and it's so <laughs> it's, it's that apple and pear. 
Look at our stills. Look at the still. It's a classic pet conference pear tree. So that's <laughs> that's the pear pear dot nose that comes out. It's right. a natural flow, you would say. Aye, so <laughs> so this, I mean, this is this is beautiful. This is a, an absolutely outstanding ram for me. It's um uh, it's probably I'm not saying it's cameras I want to do, but it's it's as close as I'm gonna to get to what I would ever like to do it, but want to hammer into. And this thing is just it's come through, it's it's ended up as a an absolutely beautiful drum. Uh, and I do get, and, but it's still got that bon, it's still got Bonham in the backbone. It's still got the spicy notes of Bonham. It's it's a wee bit more mellow in this, I think. But it's still there. It's just it's 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 not as pronounced. I think the floral bit and the and the palette just dulls it down a wee bit. And it, it's still there in the nose, it's still there on the palette, but it's still there on the finish. I I actually I think it's a cracking drum. And again, I don't know about I don't know about you folks, but forty nine point seven percent proof. Um, I I don't think for me it doesn't it doesn't need much water if at all. No. I don't think it needs any. No. Absolutely yeah. agree. I think it's I think it's absolutely perfect the way it is, <laughs> and obviously what I'm just going back to our previous dram. What I think was actually really nice about although Brendan said we looked at it at forty six point three. What I think is lovely about that is having it at the having it at the higher ABV, it gives you the option to add a drop of water yeah. if you like. Um, I'm very big on kind of letting your your whiskey talk to you. Um, and I feel this one talks to you and basically tells you that it's it's beautiful as is. Um, as we obviously mentioned earlier, our whiskies are, are unchill filtered. They are quite oily. They're kind of cereally. They've got so much going on. And I think with this, it's, it's got the beautiful maturity of being 23 years old with the oils in your um, fatty acids and everything in there. It is really coating your palate and it's like a flavour explosion. And for me, I think the ABV is absolutely perfect, and I personally wouldn't add any water to it. But again, that's obviously just personal opinion. Here's a question for the three of you: <clears throat> How does it compare to our classic twenty-five-year-old? What would you say? Um, completely, completely different. So it's like comparing apples and pears, if you like, since that seems to be the theme <laughs> just now. Um, for me. <laughs> This one, you're you're getting the you've still got bun I have in there, but you're really kind of focusing more on the the apple notes, the the fruit notes. I'm getting pine in there, and um, almost get notes of like a, a kind of freshly cut Christmas tree almost. Whereas our twenty five year old is is phenomenal, and for me, twenty five is it's almost like twelve year old big brother, big sibling, because it's it's just classic bun of having it's got your sherry it's unpeated it's it's just absolutely delicious so both phenomenal but both bit very different brendan i don't know if you agree no it's, you've you've nailed it you know it's it, comparing apples and pears was just perfect but <laughs> i think like you know i don't know if people drink wine as well if you imagine like some incredible producer of white uh, white and red wines you know i'd say calvados is far more like a white wine you know, it's, 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 it's fresher, it's brighter, it's zingier, um, it's, it's cleaner in a way. You know, it just has like these just bursts of big, fresh flavours. Um, and then the, the, the 25-year-old, more of the sherry influence, more of the depth. Um, one is sweet like white sugar, one sweet like brown sugar. The sweet like white being the Calvados and the sweet like brown being the 25. So both both incredible, incredible Bonahavens, but quite different in their style. Super. Well, speaking of white wine, <clears throat> our, our sweet white wine, we'll go on to our next one, which <clears throat> is our Monia Tokai. So our second release, this is um, our distillery exclusive release, um, which we can get from the distillery here on Isla and on our online shop. Um, so um, um, I think, Andrew, could you, could you lead us with this one? So <clears throat> cast strength again. 2004 Monia Tokai. And uh, Andrew, if you could maybe have a wee nose, and then Julianne, could you maybe lead into again the reason for the choice of the Tokai? Because I think I think I remember Tokai being used by other distillers probably back in the mid-90s. I, I hate to say it, you know, in the early days. And and I think it did really well. And it's 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 interesting to see ourselves using that as a as a vessel to mature, obviously, Bonahaven. Um, Andrew, would you would you want to talk about the nose first in terms of that and that and obviously our monia or pita spirit? So on the nose, uh, it's I'm going to go use uh, Julianne's tasting here. It's um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's on it. 
It's got the sandalwood. It's got white sugar. I'm not picking up much smoke. I'm definitely not picking up much smoke. It's, 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 it, it's like the sweetness is actually mellowing all that, taking it all the way down. It's, it's got a real sweet note on it. Yeah. But there's still a bit of floral about it. And I'm, I'm not picking up any of the normal bon ham and spice again. But on the palate, there's a smoky. That smoke has just exploded in my mouth. It's come, it's come alive. It's like it was sitting dormant and the sugars were just on the nose, just pushing them down. And then you taste it and it just explodes into the smoky. You get the vanilla coming through, the lemon zest, yep. some chocolate, and a smoky pear, which is an unusual one. But again, this is maybe a Brendan's toffee apples coming through. Uh, and I'm getting smoky pear. So it, it's just something a bit different. It's got a lovely fruity floral. And it's got a, it's got a sweetness. And the sweetness starts to mellow down the smokiness. Just just an aftertaste. Whereas when you taste it first, you just get that. You get the bun having an explosion of smoke coming through. It's now just mellowing down and the sweetness is just cutting back through it. So a lot of sweetness in this. This is uh, this a Julianne. Pick a cast, uh, cracking job. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> sorry, you Julian, just before you start, I meant to say to folks, just, it's, uh, Andrew, that's really interesting. I'm just in terms of, I don't get, you're right about the smoke. The smoke seems on the down low when you nose. And listen, folks, can I just ask you again, just pop in the chat box there. <clears throat> if you're getting the same as, as, as I say, as our whiskey makers, and it'd be great to hear from you. Sorry, Julianne, for, for interrupting there. No, not at all. I was just going to say that's the first time Andrew's ever given me a compliment, so I'll take that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Pete, as you said, absolutely. Our, our tasting notes are subjective, and we've all spoken today. Um, Andrew was saying he was getting more spice on a dram, and it's maybe because he tasted it in the office. You're saying maybe you're getting the, the kind of sea spray because of where you are, and that is so true, depending on the mood you're in, the frame of mind, um, the setting that you're in drinking it, these things do change so much. Brendan and I were over in Isla a few weeks ago and we were tasting uh, these drams inside the visitor centre. We then went out to the pier and we were tasting similar drams again and they were completely different. So absolutely, these tasting notes are, are subjective and I absolutely love um, reading other people's tasting notes and what they get. So please, please leave comments. Um, but yeah, back to, to Tokai. So these were casks that I ordered um, not that long ago, actually. So the reason that I picked these and picked them for Bonahaven and Monia in particular is I really like um, sweet casks with our, our peated Bonahaven. I think they go hand in hand really, really well and they really complement each other. Um, we talk about Bonahaven being the kind of jewel in our crown. Um, so we obviously have a fantastic portfolio of, of distilleries and whiskies, um, but Bonahaven for us is almost like the jewel in our crown. So for me, there was a kind of link to something quite royal and quite special. Um, and some of the history of Tokai, it was um, a very royal drink. So a lot of royalty did drink it. They used to gift it to each other. And I think that kind of pairs beautifully with our story of Bonahaven and, and how we describe it. This wasn't a long finish at all. Um, so this whiskey, as you said, 2004, so February 2004, this was distilled. And it spent the first part of its journey just in your traditional whiskey refill casks. Um, and I sampled that. I was happy with with the spirit. So when we sampled it before it went into the Tokai, it was just your kind of typical monia. It had the, the beautiful smoky notes in there. Um, it's a lovely spice, the oak influence. And I thought it would pair perfectly with the Tokai. So we filled that in January um, 2021. So like I say, not a long finish at all, but it was just enough to give that beautiful, sweet influence. And as Andrew kind of perfectly said, it's the, the smoke and the sweetness of kind of, they complement each other. Um, but on the nose, it, it is amazing how the sweet notes kind of take over and on the nose, not much of that peak comes through. So you do get a lot of the, the sweet sugary notes, um, as Andrew said. I actually get quite a bit of citrus on the nose as well. 
And then what I love is that the palette for me is just completely different. So it always kind of intrigues me when the nose of a, a jam doesn't match the palette. I think that is absolutely amazing that Whiskey can do that. And uh, as Andrew said, the, the smoke just really comes through then. So you're getting your kind of smoky vanilla pods, um, as Andrew said, kind of smoky pears and stuff starting to come through. But I don't think the, the peat, it, it's there, it's present and, and there's no denying it but it almost doesn't kind of smack you in the face, which I think is quite nice. It's beautifully balanced with the with the sweet notes of the, the Tokai. Um, and yeah, I'm thrilled with this dram. Um, this one obviously is quite special to me because I kind of handpicked the casks and um, watched it closely over its its journey of finishing in these Tokai casks. Um, and then obviously we decided that it was ready and we got the balance and... Yeah, I think the balance is there and it's turned out to be a beautiful whiskey. I mean, Tokai wine, Brendan, <clears throat> sorry, Julian, to, to, uh, Julianne, sorry. Tokai wine is <clears throat> honeyed and, and lots of fruit. Brendan, did, are you getting that from the from the whiskey as well? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Tokai wine, just in case anyone's unfamiliar with it, it's a, it, it's a, it's a dessert wine from Hungary. It's a, um, formed through noble rot so the grapes on the, the vine shrivel up and when they're squeezed um, there's just huge amounts of residual sugar so the yeast can only ferment so much of it into a wine and it is syrupy syrupy and sticky and deep and uh, lots and lots and lots of honey and other kind of sweet flavors and and yeppy absolutely it's just you know it's like smoked honey and smoked vanilla um Sort of like salt, crystalline bits of salt dropped on top of white chocolate. You know the salt coming from the peated Moinia Bonahaven and the and the white chocolate and the sweet notes coming from the Tokai. Yeah. So I, I love this whiskey. I, I, I think this whiskey kind of sums up a lot of things about Bonahaven. So Bonahaven is just it's quite a contrarian or paradoxical whiskey. You know, there's two big words for a for a fish <laughs> evening after three whiskies. Um, but our, our unpeated whiskey is fruity. So in a way you think, you know, fruity equals usually light. And then so therefore put it into bourbon casks. But no, 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 Bonahaven's fruity spirit is actually quite robust and strong. So it, it works great in first fill Oloroso sherry casks, which is a bit, you know, contrarian and unusual. And then it's the same for our smoky whiskey. We make a heavily peated Bonahaven called Monia. And usually, if you put a, a heavily peated whiskey into Tokai casks, it would just crush it, you know, because the Tokai is a, a delicate dessert wine, um, and you'd expect the smoke just to like steamroll it, and you would get no flavour at all. But again, this contrarian way that Bonahaven just seems to work, our heavily peated Moinia has a kind of a sweetness and a lightness of touch to it, so it just absolutely perfectly integrates with the Tokai. So again, this is, you know, when these samples came into the lab and I was asked to look at them and see what I think, it was, it was, it was great. I was just like, this seems perfect to me. I, I think it's just a brilliant whiskey. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's bottled and here it is. And <clears throat> the initial response has been incredible to it. No, it's lovely. I, I, I think, listen, you've all captured that really well. Andrea, I loved how you talked about on the nose. It wasn't overly burdening in terms of that peat smoke but again i don't know whether that just describes our whiskey really well and then just it's a huge reveal as it as as you as you take a drink which is which is great i know <clears throat> our visitors love that moinia element when they come and visit the distillery and <clears throat> and they taste their whiskey they love that that peated side um but obviously the classic non-peated is is what we're all about so it's it's, it's nice to have that variant so Okay. <clears throat> just just thinking about it there as you're talking there, Peter. One of the one of the reasons I might not be getting a, the peat in the glass, you might get more yourself wherever you are in the world, is we're actually producing peated whiskey just now and I've been walking <laughs> around the plant this morning. So maybe that's why I'm not getting it. <laughs> it could be as simple as that, it's just something that's come to me there. Not not that <clears throat> not that, you know, we're trying to put Brendan and Julianne off just because they're not with us today. Um <laughs> and, and you know, not, there's nothing better than <clears throat> a stormy day and peat smoke coming out of the still house it just makes you feel nice and warm and uh, at home as it were so um good all right listen thanks um julianne i think that that comes to in terms of our um <clears throat> tasting kits that you guys have that comes to the last of the four julianne has a has a special release today for many that have been to fajila um and julianne mentioned earlier on in the conversation we release a bottle on the day 
Um, and this year, Julianne has, has chosen an, another special release, which is very limited in in what we've uh, in what we release. So, Julianne, would you like to highlight to us our fifth? I'm just counting those, even though it's a it's a it's <clears throat> it's a Monday, even though it's a Friday, but it is a Monday in our world, but Friday in your world. And <laughs> what is our fifth tram tonight, uh, Julianne? Okay, so hopefully you can kind of make that out. So, yeah, as Pete said, we like to kind of keep one um, as a, a special release for, for on the day. So now you'll be able to, to get your hands on this and it's it's absolutely phenomenal. So it, it is a must buy. So this is a 1989 um, Oloroso finish. So this whiskey was distilled in December 1989. And again, it started its journey in just your traditional whiskey refill casks. One of the reasons for that is, as Brendan said, we do tend to, to use Oloroso for um, maturing most of our Bunnahaven. But Bunnahaven is, is so wonderful. What Andrew and the, the team at the distillery produce is phenomenal. So we don't need to almost hide it or mask it in any way with, with big fancy casks. It can go into traditional um, oak casks and it, it matures beautifully. So that's what we did. We let it mature um, in these refill casks before we transferred it into the Oloroso casks in May 2016. So this one obviously was a slightly longer finish. And one of the reasons for that is just because, as we've mentioned before, one at Haven and, and all also, they go hand in hand. They they complement each other beautifully. So we wanted to to leave it that little bit longer to really let the um all also have a have quite a big impact on the on the whiskey. This one's at 45.4%, and that's just because of the maturity of this. As it's matured, obviously, it's lost um, that little bit of strength. The nose is absolutely phenomenal on this. So there's oak, there's walnuts, there's cherries, there's there's desiccated strawberries, there's lots of kind of red berries and red fruits starting to come through. And what I love is, as I said, you've not lost the classic bun I haven't. Sorry, Pete. No, I was just going to say desiccated strawberries like that. That was very nice. Very nice. Um, yeah, and, and on the palate, you can tell that this is an older whiskey, so it's got beautiful maturity to it. It is classic Bunna Haven. It's still oily, it's still fruity, it's sweet, it's spicy. It's You've got pears in there again, so these pears that we've kind of spoken about all evening, but it's like pears dipped in syrup, like yeah. poached pears almost, that you've poached in and kind of sugar syrup. Yeah. Apples, cinnamon... And what for me is really interesting about this one is, as I said, it's it's forty five point four percent ABV, and you know typically when whiskies are are that strength, I don't tend to add water or add ice or add anything to it. But this one, I feel, kind of spoke to me, um, and I added a couple of drops of water, and it really does change it. It opens it up, and you start to get more citrus fruits coming through and more kind of gentle fruits. So you're getting grapefruit, apricots. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it really does change it. Um, there's kind of notes of like a leather, tobacco, almost like a, a cigar box coming through. And again, I'm just getting lots of pears coming through on this. Um, yeah, I just think this whiskey's absolutely beautiful. It's so rounded, it's so balanced, and it's got so much going on that yeah, you can tell I'm quite excited about this yep, one. I should lovely. probably give. <laughs> Andrew and Brendan, a, a chance to comment on this. I was going to ask Brendan because I, I, I would imagine Brendan, we don't have many of these casts of this age in the distillery. No, no, we just we we don't have much fun of having full stop, and that's that's something I'm working very hard on with with the team, with Julianne and Andrew and, and everyone else um, that's involved. We we know people love this this whiskey so much. Um, and it's not, even though it's big in character, it's not the biggest producer in the world, but we're trying to lay down more stock. So we, we, we really are short of stock at every level, which just means, yeah, in terms of old stock, this really is, you know, one of the rarest whiskies that, that, that we have. Uh, and it's, it's certainly not something that we'll be making a, a permanently available member of the core <laughs> range, because guess what? Um, once this one sells out, it's gone. But, but what it is and why we're releasing it is, to me, this is in every single way the best possible classic Bonnehaven. This, to me, is just everything that Bonnehaven should be in a glass of whiskey. It's 
It's that, you know, big flavoured Isla whiskey, no peat and sherry that just combines together brilliantly. I can taste the 12 in this glass. I can taste the 18 in this glass. I can taste the 25 in this glass. But I can also just, but it's just, there's just like a, age isn't everything, okay? And, and we say that a lot. Age doesn't necessarily make something better. But there's a certain significance and there's a certain poise and just that feeling when you drink this whiskey or you can just tell it's just it's just magical things have happened over the 30 plus years of maturation and it's it just sits together as like yeah it's just a perfect glass of bonnet having to drink so cheers cheers andrew you were <clears throat> you were counting the years there but a lot of I was just happens. thinking uh, it's such a good one it, it, it was made the year after i, I started that <laughs> And someone's going to shoot me for that comment later on. But never mind, I thought we'd get it in there. No, I, do you know what? I know it's this one there. Uh, I don't, don't think I've ever got desiccated strawberries or cherries and a bun I haven't before. And it's definitely in it. It's oh, quite, yeah. it, you know, would you like to move that one? Oh, see it. It's, and it's definitely in the glass. And as Brendan said, it's got the classic, it's got the 12, it's got the 18, it's got the 25, it's got the backbone of one of in it. It's all there. It's you, you can you can see the progression through the years between the 12, the 18, 25, and on to this. I, I mean it's a it's a true classic one of I mean, yes, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, Super gorgeous. great choice, Julia. Yeah, really, yeah. really special. Thank you so much. I know <clears throat> it will have gone down well with our visitors today. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need to have a wee drink of that, actually, two seconds. Just Pete, the whiskey's that good that Pete's getting quite emotional, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting very emotional. <laughs> he's, he's, very emotional. He's, he's thinking of festival day and he's thinking of the tell rattler. <laughs> I know, it's, it's been a, well, it will be an emotional day, especially working back so many people, you know, in the physical world, and then also reaching out to, to yourselves this evening in the virtual world. Because, listen, you kept us all company through or kept each other company it's fair to say through that through that kind of difficult period for us so um listen that that brings an end <clears throat> to our to our tasting this evening um listen again thank you very much for joining us there were five great whiskies in there it is to be fair it's hard to beat the 12 year old but i, I think it's you can see our whiskey makers have been have, have really kind of been playing about with the spirit and, and the maturation process that our whiskey and whiskey goes through and have selected the best um, um, which which I hope hope you know we all you all agree with that um, enjoy your whiskies today and once again listen thanks very much for joining us this evening and um, we look forward to doing it all again in 2023 i have to look at my calendar there i think that whiskey's begin to resonate but we look forward to seeing you all again in 2023 um and we'll just raise our glasses one last time folks will we just to say and we'll just say slangeva from bonahaven slange slangeva slangeva